Assalamualaikum and hi. Uh, good day, a very good day to all of you. Alright. Uh, I'm Shikin Aziz. Uh, so, this is uh, my part 2 lecture note uh, for topic of steps to effective silo design. Alright. Uh, I'm preparing this recorded lecture for um, a course in University of Putra, Malaysia uh, with the code EPF 4801 Process Equipment Design uh, for, my, for distant learning of uh, my students eh, uh, during MCO COVID-19. All right. For reference for this content, you can refer down there below at the uh, description box. Okay, uh, uh, from the previous uh, lecture, we stopped till step 5, okay, for the uh, effective, uh, 10 step of uh, effective uh, design, uh, which taken from the article uh, written by Eric Maynard, okay, from uh, Janaiki uh, and Johansson's uh, company, All right. So, now step 6, we look at the step 6. So, uh, Uh, for define the hopper geometry, okay, for define the hopper geometry based on the uh, chosen uh, flow pattern. Okay, here we only consider two flow pattern, common flow pattern, eh, and then it's quite, uh, 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 this is the preferable in industry, uh, either conical hopper or, uh, uh, sorry, conical hopper, sorry, either mass flow uh, pattern or funnel flow pattern, eh? mass flow pattern or uh, funnel flow pattern. All right. So we have been discussed the difference, uh, not discussed, I have been described the difference between mass flow and funnel flow from the previous uh, lecture. You can refer uh, from the previous uh, video. All right. And now uh, we are looking at the uh, graphical, okay, the, the graphical uh, chart uh, where uh, from this chart, we can identify either the powder that we're handling is under category of mass flow or funnel flow, uh, uh, flow pattern discharge. All right. So uh, this uh, chart has been developed by Andrew Janaiki. All right. So for your information, Andrew Janaiki is renowned as the founding father uh, in the field of bulk solid handling. Okay. Uh, so this this hop, this hopper design charts showing the limit of mass flow, okay, showing the limits of mass flow. Uh, okay, this is region of mass flow around here. All right, so basically this is the region of mass flow, and then uh, the the part around here, okay, that okay after this after this line. Okay, after the any line at the top line, okay, it's basically the region of funnel flow, right? Same thing uh, with this chart, okay, next week. So, it's showing the limit of mass flow uh, for this one is for conical, and while this one is for planar hopper, or other, other term for it is which, okay, which, which hopper. All right, so, uh... In this chart, the hopper angle, all right, the hopper angle, if you look at it from here, uh, how, this is what we, we, what I mean by hopper angle, okay. Uh, the hopper angle measured from vertical, okay, from vertical, all right, and uh, this is shown uh, at the x-axis, all right, this is the hopper angle, all right, and the wall friction angle, so around here, the wall friction angle is on the uh, y axis. Okay, it's in the y axis around here. Okay. Okay, so uh, for the wall friction, uh, friction angle, so this one, this wall friction angle, uh, 
this data uh, obtained from powder testing okay this data uh, obtained from the powder testing so basically it's based on your raw material all right the powder testing where they're testing the powder at various wall surface eh? they're testing the powder at various wall surface such as carbon steel uh, stainless steel stainless steel plastic uh, abrasion uh, resistant liner eh? Uh, or etc. So then the uh, and then uh, normally the the testing are based on uh, AS, uh, no not normally they are using the ASTM standard. Okay, for test method uh, D six one two eight. So basically, depending on the combination of Hopper angle, the combination of Hopper angle and uh, wall wall friction angle around here. All right. Uh, so you we can determine either mass flow or final flow discharge, okay? Uh, depending if the uh, particular material and this angle of internal friction, okay? I forgot to tell you about this. This angle of all uh, internal friction is is actually uh, the friction between the powder particles. Eh? All right. So, so for example, okay, for example, uh. If let's say, uh, if you're considering uh, uh, angle, hopper angle of 20 degree, okay, of 20 degree. And then we do have the wall friction angle of the material between 23 uh, degree. So basically, we will get somewhere around here, which, which is actually under mass flow, okay mass flow uh, uh, discharge pattern all right okay so this that is i mean showing the example how to use this chart so if let's say uh, we are uh, making the hopper wall uh, less steep okay we're making the hopper wall less steep let's say by four degrees okay so it's somewhere around here Okay, somewhere around here. And then at 23, okay, it might result in funnel flow. Eh? It might result in funnel flow around here. Okay, so alternatively, if let's say with the wall angle uh, at uh, uh, keeping the wall angle at 20 degree, all right, and, and then uh, but increasing the wall friction, okay, wall friction uh, to 28 degree or, or more than that, it could result on the funnel flow. We will reach the funnel flow condition. So that is how we we going to use this uh, chart. All right. So um, done on that explanation. I think okay. All right. So the step to achieve a mass flow pattern and funnel flow pattern, okay. Uh, so it's actually uh, it is essential for us to ensure that uh, the converging the converging hopper section, okay. The converging hopper section is steep enough. Eh? The converging of hopper section section is steep enough, and then the wall surface, the wall surface uh, friction low enough to facilitate uh, solids uh, flow without stagnant regions. Okay, and whenever any solids are uh, withdrawn, when any ever any solid are withdrawn, so. Uh, of course, the first step you need to do is to test the material first, okay, to measure the wall friction. And then, uh, then we need to calculate uh, the minimum hopper angle, okay, minimum hopper angle. And then another thing, uh, we need to ensure that the outlet must be large enough, must be large enough. So, and if you're looking at the step for final flow here, is basically is 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 about the same okay the, the procedure is about the same first of course we need to test the material the powder material first and then to measure the wall friction and then uh, the key requirement for final flow uh, again uh, sizing the hopper outlet to ensure that it's large enough 
Okay, it's large enough to overcome arching and right holding. And then we must make sure that making the hopper slope steep enough to be self-cleaning. All right. And uh, in order to calculate, okay, uh, right, in order to the calculate uh, minimum hopper angle, uh, the outlet mass, uh, and then the outlet, the outlet uh, diameter, uh, this will be covered in the, in the next uh, lecture, okay, because uh, that is cause, uh, another lengthy explanation needed, and then there are two methods uh, that uh, quite common, one is graphical method, and another one is analytical method, okay, this will cover in the next lecture. All right, so then step seven. For step seven is to consider the overall uh, uh, silo geometry eh? so, or silo shape. So, there are mainly two, okay? All right, either square or rectangular straight sided top section and cylinder top section. So, I'm comparing these both two. So, uh, you may think that a square or rectangular straight-sided section at the top of a, a silo is preferable eh, at top of, okay, at, uh, to a circular cross-section okay, because, of course, a straight wall is easier to fabricate and it provides a larger cross-sectional uh, area per unit height. All right? But uh, material flow or structural issue, okay, uh, that is another issue that need to consider. Okay? All right. Because uh, flat walls are susceptible to bending, all right? Uh, whereas for this cylinder, okay, whereas this cylinder is able to resist internal pressure through hood tension, all right? All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so cylinder is able to resist internal pressure through hood tension. Uh, so then uh, we can have a thinner wall, we can have a thinner wall uh, and then uh, we less and then less external re reinforcement are needed for circular cross section. So this that means it's good the, the cost of fabrication will be reduced. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, other than that, uh, for corner, Okay, for, for corner, for cylinder top section, there is no corner. So when there is no corner, so that's mean uh, no build up, no powder build up at the corner. While square, there is a corner. All right. So basically, hoppers can come uh, in variety of geometry. All right, hoppers can come in varieties of geometry. So uh, this illustration show four type of uh, geometry available. All right, uh, that commonly been used, but there are other. So there, there is also other shape of geometries. Uh, you can consider, right? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the consideration for hopper geometry. Okay, there are five consideration here. Okay, for headroom. Okay, typically for wish shape hopper here. This is wish shape hopper. All right. For wave shape hopper, uh, it can be for this one. It can be ten to, uh, it can be ten to, uh, twelve degree. All right, it can be ten to twelve degree, uh, less. Okay, less less uh, compared to the conical hopper. Eh? compared to the conical hopper. This one, eh? compared to this conical hopper. All right. Okay, uh, but and it still promote mass flow, eh? and it still promote mass flow. Okay, uh, so that's mean uh, by having a less steep wall, so we can lower, we 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 can uh, save some money. Okay, due to we can lower the hopper height, and eh? we can lower the hopper height. When it's less steep, this means the hopper is not too tall. So so which is important. Okay. Uh, to consider uh, the area that we have. Sometimes uh, we have a limited of headroom. Okay, we have a headroom. Then outlet size. Okay, for the outlet size, so to overcome cohesive or interlocking arch, okay, a conical hopper needs to have an outlet. Okay, the outlet diameter, this one. Okay, 
the outlet diameter here okay uh, that is roughly twice uh, the outlet width okay the outlet width okay twice the outlet width of the wedge hopper am i right okay the wedge wedge hopper so uh, does this means that cones generally, so we having a cones, that means you need a larger fit because of the large uh, outlet diameter. For discharge rates, okay, due to the slotted outlet, okay, uh, this has a slotted outlet shape, okay, slotted, okay, slotted outlet. So, uh, this has a large cross-sectional area compared to the conical uh hopper okay circular outlet okay so compared to the circular outlet uh, so that's the maximum flow rate uh, from uh, wedge hopper will be larger uh, compared to the conical hopper right then we look at a sharp okay the this factor sharp versus rounded uh, corners so we look at pyramid when we i say corners this is the corners all right corners sharp corners where where powder can build up right so uh this of uh, the pyramid pyramidal hoppers can cause funnel flow pattern to develop to develop uh, because of their inflowing valleys eh? uh, which are less steep than the adjacent side walls so uh, okay so but while conical compared to conical and transition hopper Okay, it do not have corners, all right? Uh, which tend to allow material, which, uh, okay, do not have uh, corners. All right. So, uh, okay, now considering a capital cost, all right? So, uh, so while, so this one for waste shape hopper, waste shape hopper due to it require less uh, headroom, so it can use a less expensive liner than a con, all right? Uh, and the feeder and gate valve. Eh? So, where the feeder and gate valve, it can consider uh, expen uh, quite expensive as well. So, all right, uh, so this is among uh, where uh, things, eh? Man, uh, how to say, uh, among main factor of uh, uh, cost factor lah, that we can discuss okay, for, for this. But actually, you need to look at each individual advantage and disadvantage because you need to consider other factors as well when you select which one, uh, which shape is suitable for your design. All right. So now, this next step, okay, step A is to select the outlet feeder, okay? All right, so uh, feed, feeder is another important, okay, another, another important equipment, okay, support equipment for the silo. All right, which is which is uh, will affect as well uh, the performance of the flow from the silo. All right, so to be effective, the feeders, all the feeders, when you select, you must make sure that you uniformly draw material through the entire cross section of the silo's discharge outlet. All right. So, uh, and as and any obstructed outlet, okay, uh, uh, due to, for example, a poorly designed feeder, all right, uh, or partially open gate, all right, uh, this will result of, uh, in final flow, okay. Even though you have designed your hopper for mass flow design, ah, uh, that's the things, and eh? you must consider that, that this. So. Uh, three common types of uh, bulk solid feeders as shown here. We do have a screw feeder, belt feeder, rotary valve, all right? And uh, along, uh, so it three of these have, of course, have different uh, advantage, all right, and disadvantage, all right? So, for example, like screw feeders, all right? Uh, it's well suited, okay, it's well suited for use with hoppers that have elongated outlets, okay, elongated outlets, such as transition hopper, a uh, wedge hopper, all right, okay, since a, a screw feeder is totally enclosed, all right, it is good for use with fine and dusty materials, and uh, in, the, in addition to that, it has few moving parts, so it requires less maintenance, uh, then compared to the belt feeder here, all right. So the key to a proper, uh, the key to a proper uh, 
uh, design uh, is to provide an increase in capacity. Okay, this is uh, illustration. Okay, how you can increase the capacity. Okay, this is an across section figures of the screw feeder. All right. So when I said increasing the capacity is towards the uh, feed, feed, feed direction. Okay, so we want to increase the capacity to, uh, throughout the uh, feed direction. So, um, so one common way is showing in this figure, the feeder uh, design is to have a shaft. Okay, this is a shaft. All right, this is shaft. Okay, the road here is a shaft. All right. Uh, has a decreasing diameter if you look at this diameter are big all right this big while comparing to this end part it's actually the the, the diameter is reducing okay it's reducing gradually reducing the diameter all right it really great reducing okay so to ensure so by having a decreasing diameter conical shaft and then follow followed by a section of increasing pitch okay a section of increasing pitch so by having this you can you can get uh, you can increase uh, the uh, capacity Okay, increase the capacity of the uh, flow in the direction of it. All right. Well, for belt feeder, okay, so belt feeder, uh, it, it, it can be a good choice for an elegant hopper outlet as well. And uh, these are useful for handling cohesive or coarse. Okay, cohesive or coarse bulk solids uh, that require a high discharge rate. All right. Uh, so, and it can also be used to weight the bulk solid because it can uh, uh, it can it, you can assemble uh, uh, you can mount it the, uh, the belt feeder on load cells. All right. And then the good design for this is to provide an increase in capacity in the, direct, the direction of feed as well. Okay. All right. And then the belt feeder are not as good as screw and rotary valve. All right. For handling fine and dusty material, it's not good for handling dust, uh, dusty material. Uh, so then, if you uh, if you considering the belt feeder uh, for this material, you need to enclose and seal eh, to ensure that uh, you have a proper dust collection measures. And then rotary valve. So rotary valve here. Uh, these are common feeder, especially for discharging uh, bulk material into a pneumatic pneumatic conveying system. Uh, the use of rotary valve is generally limited to hopper with circular, with circular or square outlet, and they should not be used for handling highly cohesive solid, uh, because such material and that's because such material have a high propensity have have uh, uh, ability for bridging eh? uh, that requires large hopper outlets and then uh, a properly designed interface okay a properly designed interface must be provided above the rotary valve to ensure that solid are withdrawn uniformly all right uniformly okay so uh, this is among common uh, feeders. Okay, let's look next. Okay, now we look at uh, step nine. Okay, step nine is actually to select. All right, to select uh, other functional components. Okay, the other functional components. So the functional components. Okay. Uh, 
is also needed okay and depend on the needs okay uh, the, how the, the 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 nature of the work in the industry okay how you going to use the silo what things that you need with your silo okay so we do have here uh, the main the common main uh, components that need to consider eight components all right okay so one is outlet gate or shut off gate okay so in general uh, this gate uh, at the bin outlet should only be used for maintenance purpose only uh, all right and and i shall not be used uh, for mo to modulate the solid flow rate so therefore you need to consider a gate which is which is full open or full close uh, position And then uh, number of outlet, okay, some, some factory, they need a silo, it's number of outlet, but this is not really a good, uh, uh, not, not always be a good design, so it depends on the needs. All right, then silo van uh, uh, or dust collector, uh, silo van or dust collector, uh, this depending on the method of vessel filling, okay, and air solid separator that you required, and conservation van, uh, uh, this is to avoid excessive pressure, all right, and vacuum condition uh, to prevent damage, eh? especially during filling. Sometimes the pressure is increased, uh, is, is increased or decreased inside the tank, all right. So then it, will, it can damage, okay, the, the, the tank can, can, they can, dented okay uh majorly dented right and then uh then level detectors all right you uh, you should know uh, what what they need for level detector and then explosion protection uh so explosion protection is depending on the explosivity of the powders uh so, so sometimes you need to have explosion vents uh, isolation or suppression or anything okay uh, in in the uh, silo uh, need to consider this in the silo uh, design during the okay for the silo design and then uh, access doors main ways and poke holes okay uh, things for this okay of course that we need the main way sometimes because uh, we need to access it especially to clean uh, the silo the bin eh? so you must make sure that you put it at the right place you locate it at the right place so that it will not uh, disturb the uh, flow flowability of the powder inside your silo. All right? For instance, uh, SS door is good to locate uh, in the cylinder rather than hopper. All right? Uh, and then for poke holes, where poke hole is actually a nozzle pots on the hopper walls. All right, and for mass flow, it's not recommended to have this, all right, uh, because it will create a problem, eh? uh, it will disturb the mass flow, this uh, pattern. <clears throat> okay, and then ladder and railing platform, uh, this is uh, depend on the needs, uh, if let's say you need a worker to access the top roof, uh, the top, sorry, the top roof, the top roof of the silo. <clears throat> All right okay uh, so this illustration showing uh, a silo okay of a cement okay for here there is they have put uh, a ladder a rail dust catcher and then they have a uh, uh, over pressure depression valve this is under conservation band i think okay this under consider conservation band band and then they have a gate here, outlet gate. Uh, they they are using a manual butterfly valve. Okay, so and <coughs> step ten. Okay, uh, to choose the material of construction, mainly there are two material, either metal silo or concrete silo. So uh, both of these material have the advantage itself. So this lists down the advantage that that uh, under each of the material types. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So metal silo can be made from carbon steel, stainless steel, aluminium steel, uh, aluminium, and then they can be skirted, supported down to concrete pad, or they can have simple leg like support, all right? And they can have panels that are seam welded, bolted, or flanked, or use hybrid construction, okay? Uh, this is the, the 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 advantage of uh, metal silos are uh, the they are flexible to fabricate uh, the sanitary construction because uh, stainless steel tanks are uh, commonly used for pharmaceutical and food application <coughs> uh, that require full sealing, uh, cleanability and corrosion resistance, uh, and then. Uh, and then another another things for uh, metal silos is the wide variety of material we do have so a lot of type of metal so we, we can have a lot of choice to consider that suit our needs all right and then construction flexibility so we can have we can we can match our design to the local weather condition okay all right and then well for the concrete silo uh, concrete silo, the, the, the advantage is a corrosion resistant, uh, resistant to abrasive wear here, and eh? no need to painting, no need to paint, the ability to withstand uh, uniform internal pressure, lower cost eh? for large diameters. All right. So, so for reinforced concrete silo, common practice uh, in industry, it, they are preferred concrete silo because of econo economical factor. Okay, because when the silo diameter is larger than 9 meter, they will consider concrete silo. Okay, and then it can handle abrasive or hot uh, power, uh, part bulk solids. Or storage structure will incorporate additional functionality. Eh? Can, can, okay, when the storage structure uh, will incorporate additional functionality like uh, this processing equipment. All right. <coughs> so, <coughs> Uh, uh, other things uh, in this step 10 that we need to consider is the structural design consideration. The silo must be designed to resist the loads applied to it by both the bulk solid and external forces. All right, external forces such as seismic, wind, ancillary equipment loads that you, you, you assemble to the silo. All right. And then... Uh, <coughs> And then uh, uh, this consideration is particularly important when designing for for converting an existing bin or uh, uh, existing bin to mass flow. Okay, uh, because normally for mass flow, uh, uh, it has a high local localized loads. Uh, at the transition between the vertical section and the mass flow hopper. All right, so uh, I think we have finished uh, 10 step already. Okay, I explained to you 10 step for uh, effective design of the silo. All right, so basically uh, this is a common practice is in industry. Okay, you can use this as a guideline for you guys uh, during uh, your plan design project. All right, and then for the next uh, topic, we'll cover on the calculation method involved to detect the angle, eh? uh, the best angle and the outlet. All right, okay, class, see you again for the next lecture. Thank you, bye.